Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Sydney. <laughs> Yo, what's good? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Arabella Espinosa, and I am here joined by Sydney Foster. You guys are in for a treat today. We have an amazing live stream with her, and um, we're just so excited to get started. If you are um, new here, please let us know in the chat. Um, say hi. Tell us where you're watching from. It's always really exciting to to know where everybody's at. Um, I've already seen a couple people, a few people. Hi, Wade. Hi, Oliver. Um, thank you, guys. This is awesome. Um, but yeah, if just a couple little housekeeping things. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our new uh, Adobe Live channel on YouTube. Um, that's where you can stay up to date on the latest streams, participate in the Adobe Live community, and a lot more. If someone can drop that in the chat, that'd be awesome. Um, I know there's like a little a uh, link for it. Um, but yeah, so this week, lots of things happening, but you can join us at the Adobe Express Bootcamp for creative professionals, um, basically where you can learn uh, Adobe Express to create templates, social media graphics, all that kind of jazz, easy workflow stuff. Um, so Monday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Uh, PST, which is led by different experts. So you can register now and you can join um, live and access on demand, basically. So, um, but yeah, you guys were uh, so excited to have Sydney Foster with us. Um, she's gonna be showing us some, a, a little birdie told me some never before seen content. So I am very excited, some beautiful imagery. So um, Sydney, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself um, to everybody, let us know um, who you are and what you do. <laughs> No, for sure. Thank you so much, Arabella. Shout out to Adobe Live for having me today. <laughs> so my name is Sydney Foster. I've been doing photography since about, I don't know, I think I was 16. <laughs> I was 16. I love those stories. <laughs> my sister used to take me to Barnes and Nobles and Books a Million and she would buy me like fashion magazines. Ooh. And I had this, I had this idea that one day I was going to like publish and start a magazine and oh. do everything with it mm -hmm. um but reality set in and no one person runs a fashion publication and I was like well I got the graphic design part under control I gotta figure out this photography thing and I bought my first camera when I was like it was my senior year in high school and I was like I'm gonna go for it and I'm gonna do it um I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've been doing it since high school and I've had the opportunity to intern in New York and work with some of the greats, Keith Major, Daniel Levitt. Um, I've had some breaks in my career due to the military. I just got out of the military wow. this January. Oh my gosh. And yeah, like I've, I've worked for the governor of the state of Alabama, two governors, not just one. And last year was when I decided to resign and just start a new phase of life and I moved to Atlanta and now I'm on this live with you and life is really great. <laughs> wow, that what an incredible yeah. life journey. That's amazing. <laughs> and I like I want to I want to read a book about your life. <laughs> One day, that's, you know. Yeah, you know, that's incredible. Um and obviously you have beautiful work and I've I've obviously already looked through and I'm obsessed. So um, can you share with us your Instagram too? So everybody can go give you a little follow as well. Yeah, for sure. So I'm sydney.a.foster on Instagram and I do everything from editorial work to commercial work now to portraiture, Incredible. street stuff. Like I just like, like this is one of my favorite photos right now. I yeah, just like capturing yeah. like the realness of people. I like exploring colors and just figuring out how to use my photos as a voice for people. Oh, uh, I love that. Yeah. When they feel like they can't, they can't just verbally say the words. So yeah. 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 I mean, that's what images are for, right? Sometimes they can communicate a little bit strong, more strongly than, yeah. <laughs> than words, yeah. but that's incredible. Thank you for that. Um, a couple of people are or more people are joining in. So thank you guys for joining. Um, please stick around because, you know, Cindy's going to be sharing a lot of her process um, in Adobe Bridge and Photoshop. So um, I know you're going to be kind of doing a little bit of selection, curating and coloring, which is all fun. And I, I love learning about, you know, diff how different creatives get, you know, do their work and have their process and, and their workflow. So very no, exciting sure. stuff. And thank you, Wade, for 
um, plugging in Sydney's website as well. Um, so yeah, definitely go check her out, give her a follow and get, share, uh, give her some love as well. So um, yeah, can you talk a little bit about what you're going to be doing for us today? <laughs> no, for sure, for sure, for sure. So uh, last year, after getting settled in Atlanta, I was in a, a photo festival in Selma, Alabama, which I'll be going to in a few weeks. Uh, a, a French photographer named Stéphane Cosman, he charted a festival in Selma, Alabama, Mm -hmm. And I won People's Choice. I showed a body of work called Walks in the South. And I think I have at least one photo here on my Instagram. Let me just scroll and try to find it. This is <laughs> one of them. Um, but I, oh. I I won the the prize. And the wow. prize was... Yeah, I know. It's cool, right? The prize, was go, the prize was to go to Pierre Vere, France, which is in the south of France, about an hour away from Marseille. Um, and while I was there, I was able to meet one of the judges and I got really close with one of the judges after, you know, after I won and things like that. Yeah. And we were talking about fashion week and I was like, I've never been to a fashion week. And she was like, well, I mean, if you want to come to Paris, <laughs> September 28th at 2.30 PM is going to be at the Tuileries Garden in like the center the heart of Paris you can oh come oh my gosh that's and incredible I was, like, I was like no way like it's no way that like she really means this so <laughs> fast forward she really meant it it was my first time out of the country as an individual and not with the military and I was oh blown away gosh. so I got to attend uh the spring summer 2022 uh women's fashion week for Christian Dior that is and incredible that's, that's what I'm going to work on today. I haven't seen all of the photos that I took while I was Look at you. That's exciting. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do today. Uh, and well, let's I'll talk get right about, into it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's make let's it a thing. Let's do it. So, and please, if anybody has questions along the way, like drop them in the chat and I will relay them to Sydney and, you know, she'd be happy to answer them, I'm sure. Cool. So today I'm going to start with what I do after like I take photos off of a memory card. This Perfect. thing right here. I highly <laughs> recommend as soon as you finish a shoot, if you have an assistant, get your assistant or data manager to archive your files on a oh hard my gosh, drive yes. um, because anything can happen. And, and I, literally anything. I've had dogs eat my memory card, oh. specifically <laughs> a wedding. Uh, and that no. was fun. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. that breaks my heart. I can't even imagine. I can't. But honestly, exactly. these things happen, you guys. That's backing up and and having some sort of like backup system or like, you know, um, whether it's online or like you're backing up to, to hard drives or whatever. Like anything, anything is it's key. key. And to try life. to back up in two different places. So some of the drives that I like to use, I like these laces. Yes. They're pretty rugged. Yes. Um, I'm also using these Samsung SSD drives. They're really, really fast and portable, unlike your traditional hard drive that have a spinning mm -hmm. disc in the middle of them. Um, I've had those hard drives to like just stop powering up, or if you drop them once, that's it. You lose everything on it, and I got tired of that as I grew in my career. Um, so here Definitely. we are now, and I'm working off of a bigger hard drive right now called a G drive, and it's my desktop hard drive. Ooh. So yeah okay, so for me it. i like to just create a folder and in bridge you can right click or you can go to file and then the folder and then i typically like to start it with the year month and then the day so i was in paris the 26th day of september so we'll do this it was 2021 and then it'll just be like Sid in Paris or something like Perfect. that. Perfect. Someone commented, Andrea Birnbaum said, I met Sydney in Selma and instantly loved her and her work. How <laughs> sweet. Yeah, Andrea is really, really cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That year, uh, 20, it was 2020. Yeah, it was 2020 when that festival happened and it was the height of the pandemic and nobody knew like if the festival was really going to be a thing, yeah. but it turned out to be a super beautiful thing and it really changed my life Amazing. as a photographer. 
So I kind of like pre-prepped a little bit. It's yeah. always good to prepare. <laughs> I already had a folder built out, but I did want to show you all that step. So it was a... I have a question for you. Like, okay. what what makes Adobe Bridge different from, like, I don't know, let's say, like, traditional, conventional, like, folders in, like, a regular hard drive? Or, like, what to you is, like, the convenience of Adobe Bridge? Because I don't use gotcha. it. So I'm, I'm curious. Got you. And shout out to my mentor, David Campbell. I actually was a photographer at my university at Alabama State University, and he has me stuck on Bridge. And mm-hmm. what I like about Bridge, it's it's an image viewer you can browse through you can actually see the the photos in the in the folders and not only that like you can still like it connects to your photoshops it connects to your lightroom it connects to your adobe de- designs yeah mm-hmm. it's se- it's a seamless process and when you're just using your regular browser on your right. mac or your pc you can't it doesn't it just doesn't work like that yeah. And then also, I like Adobe Bridge because I can enter my metadata. I can batch read mm. files. And you can't do that on your traditional computer browser. True. Um, your, your file viewer. So, yeah. And then the upgrade, I just upgraded my software. They have it now where you can have these mini tabs. Mm. You couldn't do that okay. before. So now, instead of opening up an entire new dialog box, I can just start a new tab, which I is see. really, really cool to me. I feel like sometimes even though the technical stuff side of like, you know, organizing and all of that, like, uh, can be sometimes like either a little boring or like a little, mm, but sometimes like some of those things really do help your process and like kind of really help, um, to be organized, to stay organized. Cause you, I mean, we all know we, we've, we've dealt with like, you know, us as baby photographers when like we were super disorganized, everything was everywhere and you couldn't find things. Oh <laughs> no, I know, there. and I, that. you know, I'm I'm kind of embarrassed because I still kind of have some hard drives that look like that. Um, but me too, it, me it, too. You know, <laughs> not the only one. <laughs> but it's good to just go ahead and get this part out of the way because as I'm working with more editors and having yeah, more commercial clients, point. they always want to see those in between shots. I might select 50 photos, and they notice that it's a string of numbers that say 50, 55, 56, and then it skips to 70, they they want to see those in between files. Mm. So that's another reason, you know, just go ahead and number it and get it out of the way. Yeah. So once I get the, photo, the, the files off the card, I'll organize them in some subset folders. And then the first thing I'm doing, I'm going to batch rename because I don't want to just have like a string of random numbers and letters. Mm-hmm. because I can't find things like that <laughs> yeah so I typically do uh the date and time created which is that year month and date and then mm-hmm. I'll do a description of what it was so this is my first day in Paris so I'll do underscore actually let me take a step back let's just run it back from the top perfect so when also, you go quick, um, Andrea said, happy birthday, Sid, which reminded me that um, I need to remind everybody on the stream that it today is Sydney's birthday as well, which like, bless her for giving us her time on her birthday when she could be out, you know, celebrating. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> But instead pleasure. she's sharing her wealth of knowledge and, um, you know, all of it. So thank you, Sydney. <laughs> You're so welcome. And it's happy my birthday. Pleasure. Thank you so much. So once you get your folder organized for your first day or just your entire take of whatever you've shot for that period or day i go in and i'll right click and i'll hit batch rename since some of you all may not be familiar i've cleared everything out to start from the top perfect if you hit if you hit this plus sign right here it'll continue to add like more sequences to it sure but i'm gonna go to the first one and then i'm gonna click date and time and then you can do date created, date file, the date the file was modified, which means if you had the file, the original file, and then you did something different to it, it'll put that date on there. But mm-hmm. I'm just going to do date created because we're building out our archives. And right. one day galleries go- are going to ask for your work and you need to know when it was created. So my typical is to do the year, month, and then the day. That just works for me. It's also other options in here, but I like to know what year I did what. Yeah, I'm looking at there and there's milliseconds even. (laughs) 
I don't even know what that means. But yes, it <laughs> is know. milliseconds as well. <laughs> and so if you set your camera right, and most people forget to do this, um, we just had daylight savings time. So I do want to encourage people to go to your yes. camera and go set the timestamp. Most photographers don't even think to look at that. And then when you get in here and into your your bridge or whatever software you're using to input your metadata, most editors for photo journalism jobs will be really upset with you if it says like that 19, makes sense. 99, whatever, whatever. Because once they import it into their systems, they can it populates all of that information for them. So makes sense. Yeah. Make sure your camera's right because if it's not, you're not gonna have the right date when you go in and do your your, right. your stream. All right, so that's your date and time, and then I like to put a mini description. So I'll just do, I don't know, sit in Paris, or I'm gonna do my initials S A F Paris underscore, or no, I'll do dash, and then I'll do day one, and then I'll do another mm -hmm. underscore. And I'm doing that second underscore because I'm about to add a string of numbers mm -hmm. and I don't want the numbers to just run in with the title of the photos. Right. So I'm going to do sequential numbers and I typically do four digits because I'm typically overshooting a ton. Yeah. And when you just do three digits, it caps at 999 and then the files get super weird. So I do four digits and then Perfect. I'm going to hit rename. And it's going to batch rename. Sweet. Boom. That's so good. That's so fast. And, too. <laughs> yeah, it's super fast. I got this new computer, so I'm super excited about <laughs> I the, love the it. fastness of it. Birthday present? <laughs> yes, definitely early birthday, early everything for, for the rest of the year. I do want to note that before you go in to rename your files, you should always come up here and filter by date created because mm. if not you might get super random Things out of whack yeah and I yeah. like to shoot like I like to tell the story chrono chronologically like from the time it started until the time it ended right um so I did I do want to just point that out and so after I batch rename my files I like to go in and like do a, a soft call c-u-l-l -L, and that process is just going in to select the best images or to select what you felt resonated with the purpose is that you were shooting for. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to just kind of run through that and I'll do it like three or four times. Um, so this is Sophie. Sophie changed my life last year and Aww. I spent time with her. She's the reason why I went to Paris Fashion Week and was Aww. shooting at the Christian Dior That's so show. Sweet. <laughs> she was like a mom to me and we hung out a lot until she didn't want to hang out with me anymore. <laughs> she had work to do. Oh, um, just, just quick comments. Um, everybody's saying happy birthday. Uh, but also, um, Oliver Andrews says, having the time right is essential. If, like me, you geotag everything from a GPS trace, otherwise you end up thinking, wait, that's not where I took that. <laughs> Oliver, I need to get with you on that because I don't think I know how to do that. So I know. Hit me Tell up, us how. Me. <laughs> so Sophie took me to this super grand coffee shop situation. I don't remember the name of it, so I'm sorry in advance. But if you follow up with me, I'll get the name. And I just wanted to capture her as a woman. As a woman, she was super busy. Her title, she's in charge of making sure all of the clients for Christian Dior make it to the show from the beginning to the end of it. So I wanted wow. to capture those small moments of her in her phone working, doing all of those things. Yeah. So I like this shot. I love you know, that. Just because it, yeah, you can see where we are. You can see her other phone. She's clearly in deep thought. So yeah, I'm just going to run through real quick. Love it. It's always fun kind of capturing those like small in between moments. I think those are like very telling. Sometimes. Yeah, no, it is. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh oh. Thank All you right, guys so for that... joining. <laughs> so we got a couple note. more people. Sorry. <laughs> what's up? 
What's up, y'all? I don't know who's here, but thank y'all for being I here. I know. I just wanted to let everybody know if you're just barely joining, which I see a, a few new names. Um, we're here with Sydney Foster, an incredible photographer and director, and she's showing some never before seen content from Paris Fashion Week. So I'm excited uh, to keep going. <laughs> yeah oh i love this <laughs> this is chris chris is chris is like my uncle he was oh. so sweet he's from california he's been living in paris for all of his adult life he left oakland a long time ago and i'm so grateful to have had him because he speaks english and he speaks french very well love it that's and useful he knows <laughs> everything so if you all notice, like if you hit one, two, three, four, or five on your keyboard, um, that's how it'll put, once I come back out of this screen of viewing the photos overall, you'll see them filtered and I'll show you all that, but I'm doing that so I know like what I really like. If I don't mark anything for it, I really don't like it. So I don't have to go back and look at that. Mm -hmm. um, and that helps me, let's say, a client only wants 20 to 25 photos the client does not want to look at all of your take they want to see the best of your take or at least like what you consider your be your best mm -hmm. so that has helped me a lot and this was from a brunch with chris and my friend joe who i met in the south of france last summer and her friend and then that's jan over there in the corner he's also a photographer Aww. And one thing I I really admire about the community in in France, they like to enjoy one another. Like they love conversation. The company. Mm -hmm. They love the company. And it was like super beautiful. Aww. More stuff of Chris. I don't know. Chris had us somewhere. I, I have no clue where we were. But then it started raining. And then we kind of like tucked off in this hallway <laughs> of this apartment complex he was like come 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 in and i'm like chris can we even be in here like what's going on oh chris grabbed my camera and started taking photos of me <laughs> so yeah very sweet and when i'm not on assignment and it's no strict rules i just capture everything i capture texture i capture the small details hands the in-between moments mm -hmm. and that's just the most authentic to me i mean with me like having like i love fashion i that was another thing that originally got me into photography right. so i find myself capturing like what people are wearing on the street um and that's just a little bit of what this day was for me i had no no, no rules. real agenda no, or anything it was no. just like let's just go for it <laughs> yeah they were actually protesting in this square i don't remember the name of it but the first picture was taken one of the first pictures in the world was taken here and chris has a photo i wish i had the photo oh, wow. he gave me a print of a photo that he took when he first came there and he like gave me the history behind it more awesome. of chris Oh, Jalen Lover says, love it. And Steve you know, Casa Boom Sun, these are, these are some super cool photos. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm going to get to the good stuff here in a moment. Oh, Jalen Lover wanna... says, high school friend checking in. Sid is so awesome and her work is absolutely mesmerizing. It's a story with every snap. Oh, I love uh, that. <laughs> that's love. That is love. <laughs> so this was day one. Um, I'm going to kind of, if you don't mind, Arabella, I'm going to run through yeah absolutely the second day and then i'll come back through and then i'll start editing a little bit sometimes that's kind of how you have to do it i mean it's your process so i think you can you can share how whatever makes sense but yeah. question for you what like what what stands out to you when you're shooting like do what what do you look for i mean i know you didn't didn't have any agenda but as like when you don't have rules like what what is your like you know selection look like as far as when you're shooting I would say colors. Colors mm -hmm. resonate so deeply with me. Um, I know I have on a white shirt right now, so just disregard. <laughs> but when I'm out, like, it's the colors. It's the way the sky looks. It's the way the sun is kissing the clouds. It's it's a love story. It's a personal yeah. love story. Um, I tend to, when I'm shooting, 
portraiture of people or like finding people on the street to shoot. I'm looking at their clothes. I'm looking at their nose. I'm looking at their hair. Um, just all of those things. Mm-hmm. But for the the main thing is color, and also it's the mood I'm in that day. Yeah, and I was I was <laughs> happy to be in Paris, and the light hits so different in Paris. It's crazy. I love that. Um, if I see a moment with two lovers, I'll try to capture that discreetly. <laughs> But it's just things like that. Colors, mood, my mood, where I am. I love that. Yeah. Oh, Robert Winterberg says, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, dear Sydney. (laughs) Thank you so So much. Thank you. So, yeah, this is my first time seeing the Eiffel Tower. And I... I was just taken back by it. Yeah. You know, we see these things in other people's photos, but we never, we never get to experience it, experience them. And I think during my time in Paris, I was just blown away by how pretty it was in real life. Yeah. Um. So I, t- I took a lot of those moments in. That's right. what you have to do. <laughs> Love it. So. This was the day of the fashion show, the 28th, and it was crazy. I was so oh overwhelmed. Gosh. I didn't know, like, what was going on because Selfie was like, see it, I'm going to get you your credentials, and then I, I can't babysit you, so Oof. have fun. And I was like, uh, okay, I don't speak French. I'm yay high. I'm like 5'2". And I'm <laughs> like, okay, this, is, this isn't, uh, I don't know, I've never done this, but this isn't the worst thing that I've had to do. So when I got to the show, the the fashion show is in a temporary tent. So they build mm-hmm. a tent out. And like I said, it was at the Trilarie Garden in mm-hmm. Paris. And it was just, it was young kids everywhere. Wow. And I was just like, where, like, why aren't y'all in school? Like, I don't know how things... <laughs> I don't know how things work in, in Paris during Fashion Week or like if they get to just be out or if yeah. they make their own schedule. But also like the pandemic was going on, so I don't know if they right. were virtual schooling. But they That's were true. Dressed, they were dressed to the nine and I'm just like, wow, I wish I could just take a week and post up at shows and do these things. Yeah. But I capture a little bit outside of the venue and then I snuck in before the show started <laughs> and captured some of the behind the scenes of it. Um, got a lot of duplicates here. It's like and when I- the building is so iconic. Like just like the words are outside of it. You know, it's like so... <laughs> yeah it's it's wow it's it's crazy i it was a it's still a dream to me i still can't believe that i did this wow yeah incredible so this was some rehearsal time and so the artist the artwork that you'll see during the show anna paparazzi she designed the artwork for the stage and she did this a long time ago and it was based off of a game that doesn't exist um mm. yeah that's that's literally like some things that she described wow. for the artwork this game does not exist the game is nonsense and during her personal time as an artist when she was younger she couldn't get work like people wouldn't buy her work and i think it was just a reflection piece for her of just do what you want to in short yeah Yeah. wow yeah so fun yeah Ooh, fierce and so here you asked me like what are things that make me stop to take photographs photographs and here this this human i love the eyes Mm -hmm. um and then i love that their their eyes match their necklace the the necklace Yeah. yeah There's like this crazy. symmetry going on there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. Oh, Steve says, it. Um, this is making Paris look charming and cool and fun. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's fun. Paris Wait, is a says, treat. Uh, love an adventure like that. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Paris is a treat. 
And I was I was just amazed by the fashion and things that people had on yeah. and how they dressed up simple things. And I'm like, this probably like wouldn't be as beautiful if I was in America. <laughs> but I'm I'm certain I know some super fashionable people this way. These were the Dior boys, and they at the end of the show they had they were handing out bags. Wow. So, and this is all like before the show. They're just like walking in. Sounds Important incredible. officials. Yeah, like it's it's a thing. It's a lifestyle. It yeah. truly is. Um it's going through. Wow. Actually, I see some nuances. I think that I saw some of my files out of order when I was viewing. I don't know. It says it's doing the right thing. Um, um real quick, a Ar- 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 Hopefully I'm saying that right. Arokia Raman says, happy birthday, Sydney, and have a blessed day. Thank you very much for giving your time. I'd love to stay, but it's way past my bedtime. <laughs> Thank oh, you, everyone. You. Rest <laughs> well. Yeah, I know everybody, like, people are watching from all over. So it could be nighttime, could be, you know early morning could be anytime really so thank you for joining us um and if you are joining us now we're here with Sydney Foster who's showing us some some amazing imagery from her time in Paris during fashion week which is just incredible yeah and so here's more of that artwork I was telling you about oh yeah I don't speak fluently but I do know because I researched before I got on with you all this bow subtitle at, at the top Again, mm-hmm. it's the game of nonsense or the game that that does not exist. Wow. And the the black background, she said her bedroom was black and she felt like colors, vibrant colors just pop well off of black. Mm-hmm. So the creative director of Dior, who is Maria Grazia Correa, she wanted she wanted to keep it just how it was and the models were Turn, it was kind of like roulette style and yeah. the models were walking in a circle I'm going to try to like get to some of that stuff but wow. they were walking in a circle and then when it was their turn and when they got in the center they would walk down the catwalk it was so cool that's incredible this, this is Journey Smollett my files are out of order I don't know why it's being weird like that but I'm going to just run with it <laughs> we'll just run with it we'll figure it All out right. <laughs> This is how That's people incredible. find their seats when they walk in, like all of the super important people. <laughs> um, it's a whole culture. It's a whole thing. Had no clue. A super blown out shot that we might try to fix later. When yeah. we get to editing. More BTS stuff. So this was the photo pit. I do, I want to take a moment to stop and talk about this. So I didn't know I had to find my spot. <laughs> And I was watching all of these men like run in way before the show and I didn't I didn't think anything of it. But they were going to set up and find their spot. Wow. And by the time I got settled, I had nowhere to stand. <gasps> and I was just like, uh, I gotta figure this thing out. So I met this young lady. She was close to my age. She was working for mm-hmm. um what? I don't remember what country. I think it was Vogue Ukraine. She was there for Vogue Ukraine. And she was like, hey, it's a spot up here next to me. Like, just come stand up here by me. You have, yeah, you have like bigger camera gear. And I have my iPhone and like a small DSLR. So like, just take my spot and I can just use my phone. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. And it just goes to show that like, as women in this field, we have to stick together because that those the men were there to get their shots because they wanted to sell their photos to publications i Mm -hmm. didn't know that's how this worked prior to now but yeah they were there to get content some were on assignment some were there to sell um some were there to just blog about it but i was able to get in and get a spot but it was it was tough it was crazy and I had no prep for that so I want to encourage people as they're going along their journey like don't be discouraged if you find yourself in a situation like this, speak up and stand up for yourself because yeah. you deserve to be there. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Of course. More BTS stuff. We still hadn't got to like the start of the show. How am I on time? At? 
Yeah, I mean, you're good. We have, you know, about an hour and 20 minutes. So you, you're you good. Time's flying by. Time is flying by. I know. That's that's what happens during Adobe Live. <laughs> wow. So that's this is that bullseye. I don't know if you all remember from the beginning when I started. It was a bullseye right in the center entry mm-hmm. point outside of the tent. This is that view. I see. Wow. So this is after the show. Some stuff after the show. The photos are so out of order. I'm not going to be that person today. (laughs) Wow. It was different celebrities from different parts of the country there. It was just crazy. I don't know who half of these people were. But it also was amazing to see how fashion was so communal and brought Mm -hmm. everybody together. Absolutely. Big crowds after the show. Wow. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I feel like that would be like a very hectic, like overwhelming kind of (laughs) scenario. (laughs) But also like very mesmerizing too, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I was mesmerized by the beauty and how just people look pretty all the time. Yeah. I know I don't I don't wake up that way. <laughs> I don't wake up that way. <laughs> Love the honesty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me neither. <laughs> More stuff after the show. Yeah, I'm gonna speed through because I actually let me just do this. All right, here's some of the runway stuff. And I'll actually I filtered through some of this stuff prior to, so I'm gonna show y'all some of my favorite looks perfect so yeah and these aren't color graded but we'll get to it the photos look kind of green and kind of warm and just the reds really don't look like reds and the blues don't look like blue so we'll get to that in a second perfect but yeah these were some of the beautiful This was the moment I realized that I was at a real fashion show for a true fashion house. Wow. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. I mean, the color is so beautiful, though. Like, so striking. So it was based off, like, a 60s revolution type vibe. Uh, The designer wanted to be youthful and just, like, these tiny suit jackets and, like, long dresses. I personally will wear this denim number. It's, yes. That's a very sick <laughs> thing. Ooh. Yeah. So fun. I got, yeah, I got to see it before it hit stores this year. It hit stores early this summer. Wow. Or earlier in the year this summer. Yes, yeah, it's, it's wild how it works. I know everything's so, like, ahead. Mm-hmm. Like, completely. Mm-hmm. I was super intentional when I took these photos to slow my shutter speed down so I could see the, mm. the motion and movement of the and piece. And the texture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very I had cool. this, this woman performing live. She was singing. It it just, it was a very, like, overwhelming, positively overwhelming experience. That's awesome. And and as the models circled around this board and cleared out, like, this is what it looked like. And then the designer, Maria, came out and she clapped. And then that's when the show wraps and everybody dismissed. Um, I stayed afterwards to capture just looks of things that I couldn't get yeah. in there because you really couldn't use a flash until afterwards. So right. I tried to find people that I wanted to see. Um Oh wow! Twins, the quadruplet, <laughs> oh my gosh! Situation blew my mind. Wow! Blew my mind. Yeah. Very everyday cute. folks who came. Yeah. This woman was beautiful. I loved her silver hair. And oh my gosh! She just looks so elegant. Very cool. More things after the show. Journey Smollett. She was so graceful and so nice. <laughs> she was so kind. Um, Corey Ellison's asking, curious to know how far Sid was from the catwalk. Did you have to use a telephoto lens? I did. I used a 70 to 200. I might have, I don't know, Corey. I might have been 
because it was platformed. So I may have been 10 to 15 feet. That might be a stretch though. But I did okay. use a telephoto lens. Yeah. And when I can't have a 300, because a 300 is like, you can't insane. even. Insane. Yeah. It's insane. And it's heavy. And I was by myself and I didn't want to lug all of this gear. Right. Um, so when I can't have a 300 in post, I'll get in and crop and just get tighter and try to sharpen it. Yeah. Damn. This is one of the models after the show. So after the show is when it gets crazy. These kids were running like a herd, like they were running like in big groups to see who was coming out. Crazy, wow. crazy lifestyle. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> she's cool. She was another photographer, but she's also a model and she's been living mm -hmm. in Paris for a while. Wow. Yeah, so the people unique. were amazing. Yeah, the people were amazing. That's awesome. Just the, the details in the clothes. Mm -hmm. Crazy. So this is like when people were running to see who were coming out, who was coming out. And it blew my mind. Like I was like, y'all are really going to run to see like if you'll capture a celebrity coming out or right. capture a top model coming out. That is nuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it was crazy. It was super crazy. What a unique experience. <laughs> um, JDR Creative says, it's really fascinating to see Sydney's work in a different environment than having worked with her in the advocacy space. Her photograph storytelling is strong in any context. Oh, that's really sweet. Wow. Thank you. Who is that? Uh, JDR Creative is their, uh, their little username. I look that one up. This is the young woman who made room for me. She was like, hey, come take my spot. That's we really went out sweet. to go have lunch thereafter and talked about life. That's awesome. Yeah. And that was the night. So I'll stop here. I think this might be a good place for me to get in and yeah. kind of edit see. some things. So y'all, once you go through like your first round of looking through 1,000 and 2,000 and 3,000 oh photos <laughs> that your client doesn't want to look at, that you have to look at, um, I went in and as I was going through, I filtered. So that's what this one star is. But also, let's say if you did it like five times, you'll have like five stars. So that just shrinks. I like to shrink down my rounds in numbers. So that's what these stars are about. I see. But, so I'm going to just command A. I select it all. And then I'm going to right click here and open in camera raw. Perfect. Camera raw is just my choice to edit in. And I do want to know editing is way different from retouching. A lot of people try to use them uh, synonymously, like it's the same mm. thing, but it's not. So your editing phase of your work is getting them off the card, going to cull through them, going to color correct, uh, working out your temperatures, getting the camera profiles right. And I'm going to go through all of that with you now. But I just wanted to to notate that editing and retouching wasn't the same thing. And retouching mm -hmm. is more of your fixing your blemishes, smoothing mm. out the skin. It's a different manipulation of your sure. photos. So once I get things in camera raw, um, I again do a command A to select all. I typically like to use the profile of the camera and I shoot flat. And I shoot and, and I also shoot raw. So yeah. I like to start in the standard profile. I'm shooting with a Canon R5 most of the time, but I believe I shot these with a 5D Mark III. Nice. Yeah. So once you do that, um, I come down to optics and I make sure the lens profile is selected because you get some distortion sometimes. Yeah. A lot of people don't and know. And vignetting that. sometimes too. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. you get both of those. So this kind of eliminates a lot of that. You want to make sure it it typically recognizes what camera lens you're using. But if not, um, you can go in and select it. Mine was selected already because it recognized it. And then sometimes if it's um, distortion already, I'll slide this back and forth. I don't know if y'all can see like the subtleness of it. 
Yeah. One bulges out more, one is a little flatter. Um, and then from there, I'll just go through and kind of do it like one by one. But once I get a groove, I'll kind of copy and paste some settings. Yeah. So yeah. let me. I love this here. one. <laughs> yeah. I love this one too. And the guy that I was following, I tend to create stories within the main story. Yeah. And I'll kind of like. Be I around. love the, the the facial expression here. Yeah, and I just kind of went in to change the color of my backdrop here by right clicking. I couldn't really see it on the white like I wanted mm -hmm. to, so I'm just making it a medium gray. Nice. Right. So I typically start with cropping or straightening, and that file is already pretty straight. But I'll go in and kind of fine tune it myself. Yeah. And I have my root of third guides on here because I was trained that way, even <laughs> though I'm self taught. Um, and again, like with them being the center of where I'm going, I kind of want to keep him right in the thirds right yeah. here. All right. Then That's from awesome. there, this one is exposed pretty prop you know properly so it's not i wouldn't really mess with the light because if i do i blow right. it out and you want to keep things pretty neutral um i do kind of want to feel some of the shadows that fell so i boosted that there and sometimes it takes a little bit of just kind of playing around with you know the sliders and getting to your mm -hmm. sweet spot <laughs> yeah and you can kind of see here in her jacket, her her pinks and whites are a little blown out. So I'll go in sometimes and situate yeah. the highlights a bit. Love that. And, and this young lady's jacket, to me, it looks like her, the black is a little green. So I'm going to go mess with the tint and make it, take it towards the purple to get like true black. Yeah, or the closest thing as possible. There we go, and that and that's it. And then we're gonna move Beautiful. on. Beautiful. And if y'all have questions as I'm doing this, please, please, please. Yes, drop me in. definitely. Definitely drop them in the chat, and I'd be happy to relay them. <laughs> yeah. JDR Creative says Jen. Maybe that's that's their name, Jen. <laughs> oh what's up how you doing <laughs> I'm like that has to make a uh, click somewhere <laughs> oh, so very sweet it's definitely some fall off in this image where this bullseye is so I'm gonna like pump up the shadows a little oh, bit oh yeah there you go more. oh beautiful uh, yeah I don't know if y'all saw the difference I love that there's like a bit of that blue in that man's suit in you know what I mean there's like and then the red in that backpack picks yeah, up those colors like, right there too so I nice. like that as well I didn't even notice that <laughs> I love like when other people are observing your work like in the gallery or what we're doing now like mm -hmm. they can help you to see things that you don't see yeah I love a good like symmetry or like when something pulls from something and it like I don't know. I, I like making like a little connection, color connections. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how this photo ended up in there, but <laughs> not, not one of my favorites. It almost like this looks so like, I don't even know. Like it looks like it's coming from like a, you know, a futuristic movie. Like, this this building you know there's like it's so stark you know <laughs> yeah like, no like where are we <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean you might be predicting the future <laughs> so one thing i did um it was it was a little off center it's this tool in adobe camera raw it's called the straighten tool yes. you can let me let me try to undo it so we can like see subtleness of it and I know some shortcut keys so if you hit C that takes you to this dialog box 
So what you want to do, you want to grab the straighten tool. And I typically hold down shift when I draw my lines so they can be straight. Yeah. And I'm just going to draw it over the top of the tent. And it's it straightened it just like that. Sometimes, like, the AI in the program can, you know, be a little off. But you still have the luxury to go in and rotate and it. And fine-tune it. it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Mandy Gerard says, happy birthday, Sydney. When you go to shoots such as these, do you have plans for where you plan to share the final works? Like, for example, to get future work? You know, full transparency, like most creatives, I have struggled with imposter syndrome. And that is why I never posted any of this work. But this was a perfect time for me to do it. I'm actually going to load this on my website and I'll put like a special, special gallery together so people can view it. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's awesome. I think, I mean, I I don't, like, I think everybody has dealt with that, you know, those feelings of not belonging. But I love even the story that you told about being inside when that girl gave you that spot because she understood that you belong there. She understood that, Ew. like, you know what I mean? So, like, I feel like that, like, that was, like, one of those reminders where, like, you are meant to be here. So, you should share your work and you should, mm. shouldn't should feel that imposter syndrome, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, if it wasn't for my community, I couldn't be where I am mentally. Uh, because mm-hmm. it's taken me a long time, one, to acknowledge that, but also, two, to, like, take the steps to get through it and just yeah. see my value. And yeah. like you said, like... If it if you weren't meant to be in certain spaces, you you wouldn't be there. Yeah, so, yeah. Shout out to the There's a reason. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I'm gonna try. Like the skies are blown out, and I just I know like I can see from this picture, it was some type of data. So I'm gonna see if I can. I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna see if I can get <laughs> some of that back. Sometimes you have good luck with it. Sometimes the the detail is just fine. But let's see. Oh, and Steve that's, says, that's, yep, do it, Sydney. Great stuff. <laughs> oh. Let's see. The thing with this photo is the highlights of the building. I think I might have just lost it in the skies. Might be blown out, but I'm going to try. It also did seem like it was a bit of like slightly overcast. Am I am I wrong in that? No. Or? No, it was. It was. As the day, like, went on. Yeah, sometimes you get, like, those, like, real gray-looking days. (laughs) Yeah. So it's picking up the highlights from the building. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It's nothing with the sky. It's not with the sky. But let's see what happens with this photo, though, because you can see a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more there. Yeah. There we go. Nice. Oh, thank you, Wade, for um, plugging in Sydney's links as well. Her Instagram yeah, and her you, website. <laughs> Definitely go it. check her out and be on the lookout for when she posts this work as well. So very exciting. And if you're just joining with us, um, please, uh, you know, stick around. We're editing a lot of, well, I'm not editing. Sydney is. <laughs> um, Sydney Foster is here with us editing a lot of um, amazing content and imagery uh, from her time in Paris uh, during Fashion Week, which is what an like incredible experience just to be able to like even say that you were there, you know? Yeah, mine and, is like, still blown. An incredible, I mean, like you know, it kind of seems also like almost like elusive, like like going to some of these like events, you know. But you know, obviously, you're you're meant to be there, and you yeah. had to, you know, you were there to capture this culture this phenomenon (laughs) no it's it's definitely a culture that people like you think you know until you're in it and that's exactly how i feel definitely it's like i Um, thought i knew a thing i think that (laughs) i just wasn't able to like get this guy in this let's see i'm gonna try to do one more thing um wade says for sure great work and mandy says i love a perfectly placed bird (laughs) that might have been intentional (laughs) <laughs> that might have been super intentional. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 
I mean, we kind of manipulating a little bit, but you can see like up here, Arabella, like yeah, it just didn't make it, and I'm certain it's because of whatever can, it's that five D Mark IV. It just just didn't make it, and that's okay. So typically, like when things like this happen, I like to cheat a little bit and just make them grayscale or monochromatic. Nice. Yeah. And then Ooh, I'll beautiful. be intentional about the blacks and the whites and just do things like that. Yeah. That um, looks great. This was one of my favorite photos. I love that. I actually posted this one on my Instagram after after I, you know, just kind of went through a few of them. Mm -hmm. And so this is a good reminder if you didn't batch go in and cut the profile of the lens on this is a perfect example of what i was saying earlier so it's pulling up the the native adobe color profile i don't want that so i'm gonna go and hit standard under camera matching because i want to match the camera's profile yeah <clears throat> and then the same thing under optics i'm gonna go in and use profile corrections and it's, it populated the lens for me. It was already in there. And then I'm going to go and remove the chromatic aberrations. I I would love to talk more about that, but I need to get to a photo to where <laughs> I can talk about it a little more. Yeah. So. I like love that you captured this image and it like, even though it, it just so happened to be this way it feels like you can talk about like the intersectionality of like technology and fashion and like this one image with this man like at that point you know of like this fashion show I don't know it's so interesting I love it you know what I think my brain was just kind of programmed I was up for no I had just <laughs> finished a commercial project that dealt with technology and cell phones and I think my brain was still just see it capture the cell phone get the person talking on their phone yeah so a lot of my my work kind of reflected a lot of it also feels like a spy movie like it's like this looks like a still from like a movie too <laughs> i think wow i hear that a lot about my work so i love I'm it glad that you i'm glad that you see me again this is another one of those photos where i just didn't expose I didn't expose properly and that happens sometimes y'all yeah. like, don't don't well, especially yourself. when there's like a lot going on sometimes you can't you know what I mean like there's you, you sometimes like it's hard to be that quick you know <laughs> yeah and I know some of the pros like people who just shoot photojournalism or reportage like they can do it and I just I'm not there anymore so that's another photo that I would cheat and just make it grayscale um let's see what else we got i love how you say cheat for oh, like when saying you're gonna turn it into grayscale because <laughs> i love i mean i love black and white and it's like yeah. some of it like you know it's i know what you mean but also i'm like it's so beautiful too <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean you're right i agree with you there so i'm just kind of cropping again like i traditionally like to shoot things in the rule of thirds even on my camera I have mm -hmm. that overlay on my diopter love it I'm and sure so for um wrists were hurting after <laughs> holding this like heavy <laughs> equipment oh my gosh yeah it was a long day I think I had two bodies on too oh my yeah, it was a really long day. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but go ahead. <laughs> no, you're fine. I was just going to say, so here I cropped, I straightened, and then I color corrected. As y'all can see, as I toggle back and forth, it was very warm. Oh, and I don't have the right color profile on here, so let's fix that. It was really warm initially, and I just wanted to kind of, oh, well, I screwed it up. Here, let's start it. Let's run it from the top. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, it was a little too warm for my liking, and I wanted to be able to see like blue the way I saw it when I was there. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. I love it. So the warmness, and then it really brings it out. Mm -hmm. 
And you could, depending on what, what you're trying to do with a shot, you can get even closer if you want, like, your viewer to feel like they know it's the person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But sometimes I like to just keep, you know, the negative space, too, because you yeah. might want to put words or something on it. I don't know. Right. You just never know how you the don't know where. will be used. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Mandy says, uh, or is asking, can you expand on using camera raw versus layers? Would you mainly do layers for retouch only? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I tip, I personally, I do a lot of my layered things in Photoshop, like just for retouching. And mm-hmm. I, what camera raw wants you, I personally like to color correct all of my work. Um, So I'll go in and color correct and edit what we're doing right now. And then if I'm retouching something like myself, I'm going to show you all how to take it into Photoshop just from this camera raw screen. Give me one second. Beautiful. So beautiful. How, what has helped you to kind of like get comfortable with like getting this close to somebody that's like a completely stranger? It's taking time. My first project was a photojournalism project. It was a Mm. personal project called Walks in the South. And it was this homeless lady in Montgomery, uh, or I should say houseless person in Montgomery. Uh, When I used to work downtown at the Capitol for my lunch breaks, I would just go walk. And it was this woman that I always would see. Her name was Miss Antoinette. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wanted to photograph her, but I didn't know how to approach her. And I was like, see it. Why are you scared of this person? You know, it's no, they're a human just like you. So I just built up the courage and I was just like, hey, can I take your picture? And she embraced me. Like I had no reason to to be afraid. She was like, yeah, Yeah. you can take my picture. And we ended up talking about life. Like this woman was like, you need to learn how to cook. Things are about to change. This was right before the pandemic. I really feel like she was an angel. And that's how I got comfortable. And over time, you just, you get better at it. I mean, I still get nervous. I think (laughs) I'm I'm a little more inclined, like spiritually, like I can feel like when I should do it and when I shouldn't approach somebody. Um, But you just, you figure out what works you for want you. yeah you figure mm-hmm. out what works for you but also don't be afraid to say hello to somebody because they just might need you to make their day too yeah and true. photographs do that photographs definitely do that I love so that. i'm gonna i'm gonna take this picture in and Ooh, it's gonna open up photoshop okay. so if you hold down shift you get a whole different set of options down here at the bottom and then you hit open object and everything that I apply to this photo is going to transfer over into Photoshop. Let's Amazing. see what happens. Okay, boom, it did it. So, perfect. Transparency. I don't retouch as much as my work as I would like to anymore, but I'll go in here and like show y'all what I got and see how far I can get. <laughs> um, Jalen Lovers uh, saying, This is so helpful. You, um, said thanks for always making room for photographers like me and making sure this industry continues to make room for us that's really sweet most definitely and they say i can't wait for the next class on going from audio auto to manual uh duty calls Mm. have to run thank you both (laughs) see you thanks for joining in i know so typically when i get in photoshop um i'm gonna i'm gonna just try to run through it but i like to use a few tools and I haven't been in here in a while. <laughs> so do you generally stay within like camera raw? Yeah, I do because I'm typically or like my clients already have post houses that oh, have right. to retouch the work. So I'm either using my personal retoucher or a client is just taking the work and doing what they're doing thereafter. Mm-hmm. So it's just when I first started, I had to do a lot of this retouching stuff. But now that I'm, you know, fortunate enough to be where I am, I just color grade. I like I really like color grading. Yeah, I love that. Um, so, yeah, give me a second as I try to ID some of the things that yeah, no worries. I want to use. It's been a while. <laughs> And actually, I think um, our viewers might be getting a cutoff version of your Photoshop. So if you wouldn't mind just sliding it up just slightly from the bottom. Yes. One second. Perfect. 
That should be good. That was it. Sweet. All right. All right, here we go. Thank the you, Sydney. Patch tool. No, you're welcome. So I duplicate the layer just so like I can have uh, the original to go back to if I'm like, hey, this just isn't working. And then for the blemishes, I'll just go in. I love the it... patch tool. <laughs> okay, hold on. And I also need to rasterize this layer so we can be able to manipulate it. So when it when I opened it from Adobe Bridge, it came mm -hmm. into Photoshop as a smart object and you can't manipulate those things until you either rasterize or you double click. Oh. And then okay. it's going to take it back to camera raw because the smart object was a camera raw object. So we don't want to do that. So right. I'm going to close that out and I'm going to right click and I'm going to rasterize this layer so Perfect. I can manipulate it. And so what you want to do if you want to clean this person's skin up or whomever it is, like I try to just sample small areas and then drag it to an area Perfect. where it's clear, you know, clear. Mm -hmm. and That's so unique see, that like you can kind of like almost focus on the shooting aspect of like imagery, right? And like really just, you know like yeah. your selection is your photography and then you know depending on what the use of the image is for like you can hand it off and somebody else will edit it or like you have your own retoucher that you like to use it's super interesting like process yeah it it personally just allows me to focus more on the creative aspect because retouching mm -hmm. is technical like I can recall Very. like when I first started, I would spend hours and hours and hours on retouching because the technology that we have now wasn't the same technology right. it was then. So I can like remember spending 20 to 30, no, I'm lying. Maybe like <laughs> five, five to six hours on one image just retouching. And then when I got better, the time condensed, but I was spending more time at the computer and not enough time in the field creating. So yeah. I started to kind of not like it and yeah yeah so it just it really frees me up a bit I and think I that just wanted... says a lot about you know um like finding like what sometimes you might need to source right if you feel like you want to do more creating then it's like you know outsourcing some of that the parts of the process that maybe you know aren't conducive to your creativity yeah um, then that's definitely like a possibility yeah yeah that's that's so true mm -hmm. and i will i will say one more thing before i move on yeah, but yeah. you can't do it all going back to yes. when i was in high school i realized like no one person takes the pictures builds out the creative brief lays out the layout and you'll get to a point in your career where you'll have to begin to build out your team and know that it's okay like a lot of people fear like oh, I can't afford this thing. But one thing for me, I, I've learned, it frees me up so I can get more work and I can pay my team. Like creating jobs is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I love that because then that means you're also, pro yeah, providing jobs for other people because you're 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 helping the community as well yeah. by kind of like, you know, yeah, like spreading the, I don't know, the, the, the jobs in, in a way. Yeah. And that was a thing for me, like living in Alabama before I moved to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. People like being a creative and doing what I'm doing to make money. It's like a sin. It's like, no, you don't talk about that thing. That's not a real job. But I've been able to truly provide some opportunities for people to to work in things that make them thrive and grow as, yeah. as humans. I love that. So, well, I'm sure like people recognize that and appreciate you so much for that too yeah so, that's awesome so i'm just saving up my progress i really just wanted to poke in here to show you all how uh, the just how dynamic and seamless as you said arabella that mm -hmm. bridge can be and that was that and so i just did a like very very slight skin retouch in there um and that's it like once you once you do that, you can move back on. So I'm gonna open these images back up. Perfect. Actually, 
so we can get through the image. I love how it has even on the image like the little icons of like kind of what you fixed (laughs) or like what you've you know edited. Yeah yeah me too I think sometimes like it's error in technology and your computer can crash sometimes or programs will crash so it'll capture a lot of that data already before it like forecloses and I know Mm -hmm. once I pick back up where to start back that's happened a lot definitely definitely awesome Wade um Wade Cuffs uh says looks good (laughs) yeah everything is looking really good good job um and yeah if you guys are just joining us right now we're here with Sydney Foster she is a photographer um and based in Atlanta currently um and she photographer and director and she's showing us some of the imagery that she captured um in Paris during fashion week which like oh this like so fierce I love this you know some of these images where you get real up close to these people um that have like just major style (laughs) I know I wish I could have brought some of them back with me (laughs) I love it so I'm going to show you. all I'm going to try something. So I, I went in and set like colors here already. I'm going to try to copy and paste some of those things. So what you want to do, whatever image it is that you want to take the color settings from, you're going to select that one. And then I typically hold down shift and go down to the last photo I want to use. And then you can either, you can either, I know shortcut keys, but you can either click here where mm-hmm. the, the sliders are selected yeah hit that and you can check all but within checking all you have to be careful because it might select your crop and you might not want your crop to be a thing so i typically turn that one off and i'm gonna hit okay and it so i don't have to go in and color each one of those images it just copied and pasted it just did it yeah. yeah it did it for me um, and sometimes you, you might have to go in and fine tune because you things, might, yeah. yeah. So like this one is still, a, it's, it was a little dark for me. So I'm gonna go in and just do bump up the exposure a little bit. And then that saves you some time a little bit in your process. Yeah. I, found, I found it to save me some time. Man, I really love that necklace. <laughs> that necklace is so cool. No, he is really cool. All of these people <laughs> are so cool. Honestly. <laughs> and I want to remind you all, it's about my color and style won't be your color and style. And you have to figure out what works best for you. Like what you're super passionate about. Right. I think for me, being that I wear glasses, I try to like get my money's worth and try to truly see <laughs> what I think I'm seeing. <laughs> so I try to get colors exactly how I envisioned and saw them when I was capturing the photo. When you're capturing it, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, she's really cool. I know, great job. I mean, I think you really like kind of hit so many different parts of this like experience that I'm like wow like very well rounded yeah images. I'm definitely if we don't finish them on the live I definitely think I'm gonna take the rest of the week and finish this image setup yeah. there's so many things that are coming back to me just how scared I was you know mm-hmm. just being around because at what time what time this was when last year this was last September. last September this was last September oh yeah 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 a little over a year ago yeah it's crazy that is so crazy. this this photo was underexposed to me um so I just went in and I bumped up I'll take it back from the top actually so I can walk us through it so again you want to make sure your color profiles for your camera are on if that is your thing and that's located right up here under the first um, dialogue under edit. Mm-hmm. And then I go to optics. Make sure the lens profile is selected. 
So this one does have a little vignette around it. I don't know if you can see it, a but you of, can. Yeah, yeah. You can either like fix that here once you cut on your lens profile, and then I'm back here under the mm -hmm. edit tab, and I'm just gonna adjust the exposure to make it brighter. I'm gonna take it right, and then if you take it to the left, it minus it, it minuses the settings or the light, yeah. and it gets dark. Um, Go there. I love the movement of the skirt there. Yeah, it's fire. Let's see if we can crop and see what we can do to. What would you say is like the most underrated uh, tool of camera raw? <laughs> um, I think people the most underrated or definitely something I didn't think of until I needed to is this <laughs> linear gradient tool. Mm -hmm. And typically, this isn't a good photo to right use. But actually, I have some photos. I'm gonna come back to the fashion show. Okay, okay. And I'm gonna get some stuff with some clouds that are properly exposed. Perfect. Oh no, wrong day. Let's do the twenty seventh. Okay. Um, Wade says great tip about finding your own coloring style. Yeah, you have to. I struggle a lot. Like I was on Instagram during the beginning Instagram days and I was always comparing myself to other people and you always try to get your work to look like people you look up to, but you get lost in that and you, mm -hmm. you aren't able to like find your own voice. So I right. had to figure that part out for me. No, that makes All sense. All right. So these photos will be a great example, example. on how to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me just make sure. And I'm going to do this image here. And as y'all can see, this is straight out of camera. I haven't adjusted a thing here on the edit side of the house. So let's just say I wanted to... I don't know. Insinuate the clouds a little more. Mm -hmm. um, you'll go to your. Oh, that's not it. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Man, I can't find anything. <laughs> All right, here we go. Your linear gradient tool. Yeah. And you just hold down shift. And I'm gonna cut this overlay off, but you can, let's say if you Ooh. wanted the cloud. Yeah. So that's that's something that people don't even know exists in this tool. Yeah. But it it's really helpful like when you're doing like sunsets or you may have like blown out your sky and it's you can you know it's data there. Yeah. Um and you can bring it back with with some of this. I've been able to to do some really to cool do things some, to save some images <laughs> yeah and that's, that's the awesome. before and the after um, yeah that makes such a difference even here like you have some shadows you can you can use you don't want to use your linear gradient but you can use your radial gradient and you can go in and hold on let's see oh, what's going on okay trying to adjust the brush size and let's here let's hit add all right so why is it not doing it i need to learn these new shortcut keys <laughs> for this updated version because i know my um lightroom and photoshop updated too this week and and it was just like whoa like <laughs> certain yeah. new things you know are popping up yeah Oh, I'm sorry. I was telling the wrong thing. So you want to use the brush side of the mask. Oh, perfect. There you go. And if you do right bracket, left bracket, left bracket, makes the size of the brush smaller, right makes it bigger. Say if I wanted to like bring more light back here, 
mm-hmm. and where all of the shadows have fallen. You mask over it and then you just adjust. Yeah. Yeah. And then Love you that. can anywhere like you want more light, you can just go in and color it in with a mask. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different, like, kind of like, um, intentional adjustments that you can make and like really hone in on certain parts of your image that way yeah yeah so that, that's definitely a tool i would say is underrated <laughs> mm-hmm. for sure love it uh jen saying this live is great i appreciate the honesty of your process it's insightful related relatable and empowering i'm also learning a lot from these color editing tips Very yeah sure. and i'm here for y'all like if y'all ever decide y'all want to y'all have questions thereafter like definitely send me messages i'm happy to like sit on zoom with y'all and just kind of kind of hang out especially if i have free time because it's hard it is hard hard. it is hard another thing too like we kind of got like i don't know like tree branch you can do (laughs) some of that healing as well here versus taking it into Photoshop. Yeah. And it it gets rid of like blemishes in the photo. Yeah, that looks great. See the difference. Yeah. Even up here. Uh oh, that didn't AI didn't work out <laughs> in our favor there. But yeah, typically things that are just yeah. distracting, small things you can get rid of them. Yeah. No, that looks awesome. So pretty. Thank you. So how long would you say like um, your kind of like editing, selecting process, curating takes for you for like a project? It depends on what I know going into the project, mm-hmm. like I, I sometimes shoot unit still, unit stills, which is photography, like on TV shows or movies. Mm-hmm. Um, if I know, and if they're requiring me to edit and they may want to put something out the next day as like publicity for the show to air the next day, I have to go ahead and like, just force myself to get through it. And that could take mm-hmm. about two hours, two to three hours um, it just depends on the day that I'm having. Um, oh. If they say, hey, we only need a small edit of like 10 to 15 photos. I know exactly as I'm shooting, I know exactly which moments to go back to look for when I get in the computer. That might take yeah. me like 30 minutes or 10 minutes. When I used to work for the governor, we would have to. Um, sorry, I'm trying to. Focus no, a you're bit. doing your thing. But when <laughs> I when I work for the governor, we would have to. Let's say if it was a press event at one o'clock, the event ended at one thirty. your press secretary is wanting to make a tweet or make an Instagram post or push it out with a press release. I have to do that in like 10 minutes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's intense. So it's, <laughs> yeah. And with these new cameras, like it's this net field connectivity and you can tap and it connects to your phone and it's apps for that type of stuff now. So right. it was easy, but it's still stressful. Like if it's not it something is. you do every day, it's kind of hard. So yeah. yeah. It just it depends. Is. It depends. And sometimes I can just be so overwhelmed because I've shot so much. And I just, it'll take me a while. It might take me like two or three days to look at the the project again. But right. again, it's it's just about knowing what your client's needs are and being able to fulfill that obligation. Mm-hmm. Pushing, pushing yourself to just get it done. Yeah. So then how do you treat, um, you know, like, I guess the difference between like commercial jobs or like, you know, uh, client jobs versus like personal projects? Like what's kind mm. of that? Yeah, my personal projects just fall by the wayside. Um, (laughs) But a typical like workflow for client work, as soon as I'm done with a shoot, I will either myself or my assistant or data manager that day or digital tech, they'll put it on the hard drive. They'll get things uploaded to servers like Dropbox or whatever the client Mm -hmm. is insisting on using to review the material. 
that'll happen same day um if client is free like the next day we can talk about it i'll run through and say hey these are my photography selects as the photographer they'll either choose from that um and a project can be in post within three days for me like i can send things to post within three days if not sooner I, it's just all about it depends you know, yeah it depends on the client it depends on the situation um how urgent the project is i've had to shoot a video or direct a video in stills on like a Thursday or do pre-production on like a Thursday or Friday, mm -hmm. shoot it during the weekend and have it all done by Tuesday. Oh my gosh. Like finals. That isn't, and you have your team in place for that. You right, have right. Like your specialty folks who can edit in 24 hours. You have a post house who can handle that, but also just knowing like that's going to cost, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, Robert says, looks great. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. I'm going to put some of these on postcards. Like, I know. You really should. <laughs> yeah. No, these are great. Yeah, they are. And I'm just in the crop uh, area right now of the program. And they have presets. Like you have like your one-to-one -one squares. And then your squares are typically used on Instagram. And then your 8 by 10 or your 4 by 5 it's kind of standard. Yeah. And that just allows you to crop how you, you would like to crop. But this photo is so wide, you can't really get the full it's picture. It's hard. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, eight and a half by 11, traditional paper size. Um, I typically just keep it full, and that's how it was shot. And then, depending again, how the photo will be used. Right. I crop from there. I miss Definitely. Paris. This is Aww. really making me miss Paris. <laughs> I've never been, but I miss it too. <laughs> we should go. We Let's should do it. Go <laughs> oh, so cool. So cool. How long were you there for? I was there for about five days. Five days. Okay. Yeah. Time to I'm go back. head back over to the show. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to head back. Yeah, it's time to go back and I'm going to head back over to the yeah. show because I want to color correct some of the, the catwalk shots. Yes, definitely. Those ones where like all the models are like on mm -hmm. the. Yeah. Those are and so I'm just, cool. I'm going to just select just that bunch. Another cool thing that I like about this, let's say if you were reviewing like mm -hmm. for the first time. You can take the photos into review mode instead of oh, having wow. your full screen. Yeah. You can just do this. And you can still rate. You can do all of those things. That's cool. Yeah. And I, I've noticed it loads the photos faster because it's not a full, fully optimized right. photo. I love this. The colors are just so cool. Man. You should research that artist. She's um she's pretty deep. I I took some time over the weekend to just research the artist. Yeah. Um, or just to research the theme in the set of the show. Right. Because I just wasn't aware. So I'm gonna try to get one photo right and okay. copy and paste the set and to kind of see if it's up. I feel I, like I love those like two models in the front, the green and the the blue. Yeah, they have yeah. like that kind of um, like boxer style, like clothing in a way. Like it feels like it with the shorts and the the material of it. Yeah, it's kind of like where would you wear this to? Like, I know. <laughs> I think for me, the fact that people wear these things like outside of the runway is like what would be the perfect time to wear this? Yeah. I, I don't know if I have any fashion people on here watching right now, but I'm <laughs> curious to know like how you would wear this stuff. Right. Every day. So fierce. I love it. Yeah. 
sometimes I toggle back and forth to just kind of see and see if I can like stretch the picture a little more but also like I feel like this is kind of looking more purple to me than blue so I'm gonna just yeah Sometimes I'll go into the color mixer and go and in. go straight and, to the color. Yeah. And so what I did, I went back to the edit dialog box. You can either press E or click here where you see the, the sliders. Yeah. And then I navigated down to color mixer and then you click this target icon and you can sample. So it takes you where you need to go and it kind of Oh. pre-selects the colors but sometimes that can I, it's hit or miss for me I haven't okay. really perfected it but sometimes it'll like get it spot on but sometimes you physically have to go in here and right. do it color by color and either go into like sometimes like hue or like luminance into some of the other yeah. options in there too yeah so oh, like, yeah, there you go. It, t- it took it all the way to, to purple. To purple. Mm-hmm. So kind of pushing. That's a more. little better. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a lot better, actually. Just a little, a little pushover to the that blue yeah. side. <laughs> yeah, and that like made a world of a difference. Oh my gosh! Gonna, I always love doing gonna... that. Kind of looking at the back and forth, <laughs> the before and after. So you got some lens distortion before you cut the the yeah. lens profile on, and then with it not being in the camera color profile, you got some things going on there too. And so yeah, that's that where we, we took the image <laughs> from that to that, and it's crazy just like that. So I like these colors. I'm going to try to apply them to a few of the other images and see right. where we go. Boom. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that did a pretty good job. Yeah. See I know it's so it's kind there. of unique because there's like, you know, the there's a little bit of that challenge of kind of shooting indoors with like these bright lights. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that that whole thing about it too. Yeah, I I don't think sometimes like you can even have a director like figuring out that lighting situation and it's still you still can't get it how you want to for photographers. Yeah. And this room was very it was it was green. But you yeah. also can see the true colors, but the techno like you said, the technology in the camera just doesn't pick up on like what your real eyes pick up on. Right. Man, that's crazy. That is crazy. Oh, geez, amazing. <laughs> I know. It really is. And that again, I'm awesome. just, I'm taking one photo and I'm sampling and pasting it. Yeah, that looks great. And it's like that, that part of it, like being able to kind of copy some of the settings and paste it over to some of the, like those other shots of the same kind of scene or at least in the similar like lighting scene but sometimes yeah. you still have to like go in and like you know maybe you you changed your exposure in some way and so you have to like you know yeah kind of go in and, and and fix that as well fine tune it fine yeah. tune it mm-hmm. yeah. and so here i'm just kind of cropping to like the picture that i want to see Um, yeah. I really like I wish I would have composed this a little better or shot it faster so I could just get these two but it's mm-hmm. okay and so like you were saying like that fine tune in this one is a lot more darker than the other two so I'm right. just gonna come in and slide over to the right a to get bit. a little more mm-hmm. yeah that's looking really good I wonder how much these models get paid. I know. Those were some uh, of the things. I also was curious to know how old some of them were. 
or like how young they were definitely I know it's always so interesting this this part of the world I guess (laughs) so much I know Corey was asking about what mm-hmm. lens did I use. So sometimes, gosh, I this is at a 70 to 200, but sometimes you just have to go ahead and crop tight. Uh-oh. <laughs> and just get right in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That looks good. Get up the contrast. And one thing I, I too like about Adobe Camera Raw, they they actually added a feature. This texture feature wasn't here before. Yes, they did. Yeah. Yeah. And so you I can love go it. And add, add some texture, which adds some sharpness before you even export it out. Yeah. That's great. Oh, Mandy says, great live. Thank you for sharing your process with us, Sydney. I got to run, but we'll definitely look for the replay to catch what I miss. Thank you for sticking around, Mandy. I'll see you later. (laughs) And just as a reminder, you guys, if you're just joining us, I know we have about 20 minutes left, but um, we're here with Sydney Foster and she's um, sort of taking us uh, through her process of editing, selecting, curating, and and now she's kind of going in, in camera raw and you know, getting all those details fine-tuned. So it was from some of her imagery that she captured in Paris Fashion Week last year in September. Very cool stuff. I love, I love, love, love the color. So they kind of almost look like dolls, just like. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Like so the, the slick ponies, you know, and the like just shined like kind of hair. Very unique. Yeah. And I wish I could have like stayed backstage to capture more of that BTS, but you don't have the right credentials. You got to go. And I didn't <laughs> like, I wasn't trying to like miss the entire show. So I just, I chose peace that day. I <laughs> chose peace that day. <laughs> I love it. Very cool. And so as far as like if, you know, I guess you could probably, I'm sure like all those guys who were like, you know, the photographers that were like in that area, like just go and sell these images, right? To kind of like different, you know, um, media i guess <laughs> yeah so typically like they get the word of the show oh i forgot to say you don't just get the address to this to these shows you don't just know where they are so they get tipped <laughs> off or they get a sign you know they get the yeah. assignment and it's kind of like whoever gets the best shots and how quickly you can turn them over to the publication they'll either buy them or not so wow. yeah so Thanks. I've kind of missed that window for that, but right, I right. probably more than likely will like share these with Sophie and, you know, talk to her about some things and I don't know, maybe land back at Fashion Week. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the plan for me. Yeah, I know. That's great. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And like your crops tell a story, like depending on mm-hmm. how you crop an image, I think that's another thing that people just kind of take for granted. Um, but every small detail in photography counts, even when you feel like it doesn't count. But also, yeah. don't be so serious about it to where you just don't have fun with it either. And yeah. I've been there before. I think I might even exaggerate the vignette here. I feel like it might draw you in a little mm-hmm. more. That's so fun. I love that like big shadowy thing on the left. <laughs> it probably was a human body. Probably yeah. somebody taller than me. Yeah. Now that looks Let's awesome. See what else we got. 
more bag stuff. So unique. And thank you, Wade, for putting it, uh, Sydney's links as well. Again, um, please go check out uh, more of Sydney's work on in on Instagram, sydney.a.foster. Um, and then her website as well, sydneyafoster.com. That's where you can check out everything. And hopefully we'll be seeing some of this work up there at some point. <laughs> no pressure. So no pressure. pressure. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Just I know how, the difference. How flat you're, mm -hmm. I too find myself shooting in this style to where, like, I'm like, I shoot like I'm a spy sometimes. Yeah. Um, I haven't really discovered out why I do that, but it feels really good to see it sometimes. So I screwed mm -hmm. up. Here was a, an example of me trying to copy like earlier settings to paste them on this picture and it just right. didn't work out. So I'm just gonna undo that and you can undo it. Like let's say if you get something you don't like, you can toggle back to the default mm, and that's okay. the default. I see. Yeah, sometimes, the, again, sometimes it doesn't work. So you're gonna have to like kind of start from the beginning again. Yeah. yeah. Even though it's like in the same scene, you know, it's still like however you change your settings or whatever happened, you know, in that moment um, mm -hmm. can change. Yeah. Yeah. And see, I feel like this pink might be a little too red. Um, so I'm going to just take some time and try to work through this image a little bit. Let's see what we can do. So like these reds up here, mm -hmm. that I know that's supposed to be red and it's not. <laughs> I know, I feel like that's like also the other challenging part because there's so many different colors in the scene in this like runway that it's like getting to work yeah. around like color correcting everything is, is definitely a challenge. <laughs> yeah. I might struggle a bit here, but I'm going to try my best. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's kind of get looking better. Arabella, like in your line of work, like, do you spend a lot of time doing things like this or actually retouching? Yeah, so we we retouch. Um, most of what we do is is like commercial product. Um, we do work with models too and kind of do like lifestyle or like you know in uh studio stuff as well but yeah i mean like it's definitely different because like i i mean like i shoot my own personal work too which is definitely more street and you know clothes or like lifestyle um so that process is different i think it's more similar to like what you do where it's like you know you're you're culling you're selecting and kind of like going through that process but with products it's very we're usually like we know what we're shooting and mm -hmm. so every the selecting the selection process is not that deep you know it's just kind of like okay we know those are the ones like we got to the final shot like the one that we liked um so everything's basically selected at that point but it's definitely a lot more heavy on the retouching for sure as far as manipulating compositing um mm. color correcting especially you know um certain things we you know som sometimes clients want to like be very specific about like uh hex codes you know diff like for their branding um so yeah it's definitely it's a unique process that's also like different but um i meant like i go into i would say like start out lightroom and then i go into photoshop to do like more heavy retouching no i feel that mm -hmm. i feel all of it yeah yeah it's definitely it's definitely unique <laughs> But I think it's like, I think one of the best things, and I feel like I can see it like in your work here, especially as you travel to Paris, but like the location sometimes can be such a source of inspiration and, and like being in a new place is always so exciting. And I was actually just in Oakland yesterday and, 
you know, I'm like, man, I need to come out to Oakland more. Like there's some really cool grungy locations that are like, you know, and, and like really unique buildings and colors and textures. And I'm just like, I love, I love all that. So it's always nice yeah, to get that, out too. That sounds fun. Where are you? Are you in LA? Or? So I'm in San Jose. So it's about like 45 minutes from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I've never yeah. been out there. Definitely come. The Bay Area is really fun. <laughs> I've heard about it. I just hadn't visited yet. Well, if you ever come, I will take you to the best coffee spots and we can definitely go shooting. <laughs> My love language. Yes. Mm. I love this like top. It's so cool. It's so cool. And again, y'all, like I was very specific about getting that blue wall, right? Because it yeah. was off. It was looking purple. That looks and awesome. being that I wasn't trying to sell my photos, I didn't just focus on full looks. So that's right. why I'm cropping this. Yeah, I feel like your your images are like more storytelling of like this space and like the like the beings in the space too, like and the, that relationship. Which yeah. you know, it's like there's movement, there's color, there's you know, all that. It's very cool. Yeah. Thank you. So we have about 10 minutes left, you guys. So if you have any last minute questions, feel free to drop them in the chat for Sydney to answer. Um, you know, she's been showing all sorts of things today and we love it. So thank you, Sydney. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been cool. Like I, again, this is like, some personal work that I was needing yeah. and wanting to edit and I'm glad I got to do it here and share this project with you all do you are you typically uh listening to something or like doing anything yes. while you're doing editing <laughs> yes um I like what's your go-to to... or your guilty pleasure <laughs> I've been listening to like a lot of Soho House playlists they have yeah. kind of like some real chill things a lot of um I like Alex Isley, so I like to listen to her when I'm editing. Um, just R&B, but like Afro, like like futuristic R&B or like alternative R&B that's like just super chill and mellow. Yeah. Because um, if not, I'll be in here dancing if I'm listening to like some hip hop <laughs> or something like that. Love and it, I won't love get it. much done. I know. I know. Anybody in the or chat I'll tell us to a what you what you listen to or, or do? Yes, podcasts are awesome. Love a good podcast. That's a really cool, like two piece set. So cool. Yeah, that's fire. One day I'll be able to buy some of this stuff. <laughs> Same. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to like copy and paste some settings. Okay, it kind of worked, it kind of didn't. Okay, I love the working. movement of that though, that's so cool. A little overexposed, just a little bit. I'm gonna try to tone it down and see what happens. So here, like, Ooh. these kind of look purple to me. Yeah. Like indigo. Uh oh. Sometimes you can try to use the straighten tool and it, like, doesn't even respond the way you see it in your <laughs> head. So this is a scenario where you'll have to go in and rotate and right. do it yourself. And then if this lock is on sometime, it will constrain, it won't allow you to manipulate your, manipulate your aspect ratio. So I hit it off when I wanna just kind of freestyle and do my own crop. Sure. And then I'm gonna go back into the color mixer and work on this, this blue situation. Yeah, there you go. That looks more yeah. authentic. <laughs> yeah. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna try once more to batch. Kind of those ones. Yeah, 
There you okay. go. Okay, and it, it fixed okay. it and it saved me yeah. some time. That's so cool. I love the intentionality too between like you saying kind of like slowing down the shutter speed. Yeah. It's a good call. Sometimes it works. Yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But in this moment <laughs> I really wanted to just see like what it was gonna do. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but I'm getting now vibes like like Willy Wonka chocolate factory like colors, like everything just being super wonky. <laughs> yeah. And it was like it was an interesting I really want to know what Anna was thinking about when she created this piece. Like I, I watched the yeah. interview and she was just talking about like how vibrant and how colorful, but some of the colors are super wonky. Some of them they don't truly complement one another well. So yeah. I don't know. I think just as an artist, you have that freedom when you right. are expressing yourself. And it's it's cool how we tend to do that. Yeah, definitely. So, this got a little grainy. I don't know if y'all can see. Mm. So I'm going to try to tone it down. And sometimes if you overexpose a shot, you get grainy images. Or if your ISO is too high and you're shooting you get yeah. some graininess and sometimes it works sometimes that might not be what you're going for and you can kind of correct it but sometimes you just can't correct it and it's just the reality of the shot right i know i'm sure like that even like in uh, this kind of setting like lights are turning off and then turning on and like things are like happening and moving and it's just it, yeah you just don't know the lighting situation sometimes so you really have to like act on your feet <laughs> yes it and was be a changing lot of things that. quickly yeah it was a ton of it yeah also i want to note that sometimes when you mm -hmm. try to auto straighten an image it won't do anything and it says could not straighten this image automatically so again, you have to go in and manually straighten it. Mm -hmm. There we go. Nice. Yeah, I even like this situation. I know. I know Whatever's happening here. <laughs> oh, that's like awesome. that's super cool. But then you got that graininess that we were talking about. Right. But... Yeah. yeah, I really I also love that corner time. though too, even for some reason. It like here. That looks like her hair. <laughs> like it's just like just, I don't know, something's going on there. It's very interesting. Yeah. You mean like down here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. I sometimes you shoot images and you don't even know how I you know. get them. All very, right. Very I think cool. I, I see we're kind of running out of time so <laughs> i just want to show you all the time did fly by i didn't think i know right it doesn't it? it yeah so i'm gonna show you all how to export um Perfect. again you, you start with your top photo here hold down shift come all the way down to where you want to export at and i want to get right to where i left off mm -hmm. and you select them all and then you can either click here, or if you're still holding down shift while you're over here, you can click here to okay. export, but I'm gonna go here at the top. Cool. It's for comfort. So in the save option dialog box, it gives you options. Um, I typically like to save in the same location, mm -hmm. but I'm going to save in a new location. All right, and then I'm gonna hit new folder, and then okay. I'm gonna do. I typically do like JPEGs or finals, so I'm gonna do FNLS for finals. Hit create, then hit select. I don't have to do any of the file naming stuff right. because that's something we did in the beginning. We yes. don't have to do that anymore. Um, I'm gonna maximize the quality. And we didn't do metadata, but maybe I think we, we might have some time. We may, may not. Um, I'm going to do default sizing because I want it to be the highest quality. Perfect. And then you're going to hit save. And as you can see here, 
it's rendering out. Nice. And then I'm going to hit done. And so when you hit done, it, it keeps all of the XMP file information. Yeah. That part you said you like where it indicates like that you cropped something or you edited something. All, um, that, information all of that is, that you kind of changed about the image. Yeah. Yeah. It's there already. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, now let's go and uh oh, find the folder, which I don't see, which is odd because we built it out. Y'all just saw me build it out. <laughs> Maybe it was in the like further out. Let me see. There oh, so it's in a different. It's in a different folder. So it's there in that go. original folder. So yeah, now you have all of cool. your files. Yeah, and these are the the files that we sat and edited together. Yeah, that and looks real awesome. quick. So if you right click, once you select them all, you go to File Info, and this mm -hmm. is where you can input your metadata. So uh, I'm say okay. Sydney A. Foster at Christian Dior Spring Summer Twenty Two Show. And Paris, France. Perfect. And it'll batch it for all of the photos if they're all selected. And it's other things that you can add. We don't have time to talk about it. But <laughs> now, now you got some metadata written. There for you it. go. And that's that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sydney. That was amazing. Um, great way to show your process and everything. Um, we loved it, so we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, and you guys make sure to stick around. Um, you can join Andrew Hawkrattle for the Adobe Express Boot Camp. It's going to show you all sorts of things. Um, and following after that, we stick around for a new episode with of Animation 101 with Pixie Pew. Uh, and then after that, there's a sketch to vector with DTM. So tons of stuff. Make sure to um, watch and, you know, learn from all sorts of creatives. So thank you guys so much. And until next time, bye. Peace. Thank you.